And that was a very funny uh, in introduction. I, uh, and we, we have known Victor for many years. There was one small error that uh, I want to point out. Uh, my mother was from El Salvador, not Guatemala. That's a big difference. But <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I'm, uh, uh, I'm Frank Escher. Uh, uh, I was born in the States, but I grew up in Switzerland. Uh, and I studied architecture there. And then I came to LA uh, with the idea of staying here for a year. Um, and that turned into, well, 30, 31 years. And, and uh, 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 Robbie and I have, uh, have been uh, partners and uh, working together since 1995. So it's uh, 24 years at this point. And um, um, yeah, so that's who I am. And, and uh, I'm not sure that we have our finger in every art gallery in LA, but, uh, but that's an important aspect of our work yeah. is uh, working with artists and art. And uh, so we do a lot of exhibition design and uh, collaborations, collaborations with uh, contemporary artists in LA. I mean, in, in, in my case, it was really, um, it was a little bit accidental that I, I came here, as I mentioned, because there was this potential project. And uh, I ended up uh, really being completely sort of drawn to the city because of its really amazing 20th century architectural history. And uh, uh, so the, I, I very shortly after I arrived I started working on this project, a, a book on John Lautner, uh, which was the first book on him and then um, uh, I uh, became the administrator for the archive. And so that kind of led into a number of other projects that were uh, sort of uh, based on uh, uh, well, really our mutual interest in uh, architectural history or history in general but architectural history in particular and 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 uh, uh, you know that also led to a number of uh, uh, projects that we've been working on and continue uh, uh, to work on uh, and so that was just sort of one thing that kind of was really incredibly interesting about about uh, uh, Los Angeles but that's really just one aspect I mean there's several other uh, things about the city that uh, I just uh, it, it just sort of matches really well with our own personal interests and 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 at this point Los Angeles has really become you know my my home and and in my case uh, I grew up here um, originally from Sri Lanka and uh, uh, went away for school um, for for my final year, and then came back and and uh, immediately started working here. But uh, after a while, you know, I felt that uh, aside from being my home, that uh, this was a, a very kind of interesting city to live in in terms of culture and arts mm -hmm. and music and and uh, that it would be a good place to establish a practice. And, you know, one of the things about Los Angeles is, is, is really because it's sort of at this sort of intersection of these really uh, uh, interesting sort of cultural worlds. I mean, uh, uh, being on the western coast, there's a very uh, interesting connection and openness to Asia, you know, and, and, and with the different schools that have been here for many years uh, that all have had really interesting programs about sort of let's say South Asian music, Cal Arts for example, uh, or, or just sort of, uh, these really interesting connections to various uh, uh, Asian cultures. But then there's also of course the whole connection to Latin America. I mean this after all it was it's a city that was founded by Spain and, 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 and belonged to uh, Mexico and, and, and there's this sort of really interesting kind of uh, uh, different worlds that all come together, and 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 because Los Angeles, you know, unlike some East Coast cities, it wasn't really sort of populated by a sort of unified specific group of immigrants, but it was all it was people that had maybe arrived earlier in the United States and then came to the the West Coast. So it, it, it from the beginning on, it was a sort of very sort of mixed, a very sort of uh, uh, a diverse uh, a, a group, and 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 
uh, you know, Los Angeles, you know, the, it, it has what I would call a, a tradition of experimenting, and these are experiments in sociopolitical experiments, these are experiments in uh, 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 art uh, and, and architecture. That is what spawned at the beginning of the 20th century this really amazing architectural sort of uh, fabric that it continues to really produce uh, what I think is a really amazing contemporary art world and that comes out of this sort of thinking, this sort of this openness to uh, experimenting. Well, uh, the part of it had to do with uh, with one of the earliest projects that we had, which was the restoration of a house called the Chemisphere by architect John Lautner, and uh, and that came about because uh, Frank had done the first major monograph on Lautner, and uh, when when the house was bought uh, by its current owner, uh, uh, he he approached Frank and and uh, thereby us. Uh, to do the restoration, but uh, from that, um, uh, other uh, modernist houses um, that that needed restoration, the clients came to us. Uh, so for doing a um, a Neutra house, uh, an addition to an, an addition to a Neutra house by uh, that, that was designed for a, a dancer named uh, Eugene Loring, uh, who choreographed. Uh, West Side Story and and was, was it important? Billy the Kid. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Billy the Kid. Okay, um, but and nonetheless, it was a very interesting house, and uh, and from that, you know, we we kept getting referrals for these houses. Um, but then, uh, aside from this this modernist history, uh, we were also about ten years ago. Uh, introduced to a, a project uh, for a very important uh, church in the uh, Mexican uh, Mexican American civil rights movement. Uh, it's called the Church of the Epiphany, and uh, and so that that kind of uh, introduced us to this other aspect uh, where it wasn't necessarily uh, the, the the from the period, or the buildings weren't built from the period, but uh, it was this political and social uh, activity that happened in the same period as these modernist houses that we were looking at, um, which then opened up a, a whole other world of, of culture and art that was produced in the period in, in the Chicano community, and, uh, and yeah, so mm -hmm. that continues to be a, a, an area of activity and interest. And so, so you know, I would I would say that uh, it's been an interest not simply in res uh, restoration of, of, of buildings, but really preservation of cultural history, and and the things that we've been able to to do projects that maybe sort of uh, grow out of this interest in architectural history that are not necessarily uh, uh, you know just restoration projects. So when is uh, uh, a few years ago we were asked by the. Max Center at, at the Schindler House to do to propose a project that had to do with the Schindler House, and we uh, uh, proposed to do an opera on uh, Pauline Schindler, the wife of Rudolf Schindler, and we knew uh, about her extraordinary uh, uh, life, very interesting life, and the many uh, uh, people that she collaborated with, that she knew, that she. Uh, corresponded with, and so this uh, this opera libretto was really constructed from uh, this amazing correspondence between her and Frank Lloyd Wright, and 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 uh, her husband, of course, and her family. Uh, the entire third act was correspondence between her and John Cage, mm -hmm. who uh, uh, at, she and and John Cage at one point had a brief but very sort of. Uh, Intense, intense uh, 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 affair, and uh, and she uh, she was twenty years older than Cage. Introduced him to many people like like Schoenberg and 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 other people. And so so we produced this opera. That was one project that came out of that. We also did a really interesting project uh, collaboration with the artist uh, Stephen Prina, who's an important American conceptual artist. 
uh, who uh, um, uh, uh, with uh, Stephen uh, Prina, who's uh, this um, American conceptual artist, and he wanted to recreate all built-in furniture of two no longer existing Schindler houses, and so it came to us and asked if we can help him do the do the drawings, and and so we we. Uh, 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 spent uh, several weeks of researching Schindler furniture and drawing drawings that were much, much more precise than anything that Schindler would have ever done. And then the furniture was um, uh, produced um, uh, and uh, treated by, by a carpenter in, in Austria. In Austria, yeah. yeah. And it was first shown at the secession in Vienna, and it was shown a few years ago at LACMA in, 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 in Los Angeles. But, so uh, uh, this uh, just sort of as examples of of projects that are that go beyond sort of strictly restoration right. projects, which of course are, are incredibly interesting. But uh, you know the whole cu cultural history around that is is just as important and just as interesting to us. Well. Um, I have to say that Benedict deserves a lot of credit for seeing the, the, the quality and the potential of the house because the house was actually, it, it was, uh, for many, many years it was on the market and people were trying to sell that, nobody was interested, the in interiors were in really bad shape and it was, you know, a lot of people thought this is just a weird house. And 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 uh, I remember going there with Benedict the first time he saw the house, and he, he he looked at it, and he was really able to just sort of filter out all of the you know the terrible change that had been done to the house, and he sort of really understood what this house was, and 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 this was sort of at the very it was sort of at the beginning of the rediscovery of mid-century architecture, you know, and and and. and uh, uh, because you know there was a time when you could actually, for very little money, pick up a Neutra house or pick up a Laudner house, and 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 so him sort of seeing the 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 importance of this, uh, and then uh, inviting us to 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 work on on this, I think um, also m maybe created a larger moment in 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 Los Angeles where where people started to sort of see how you know how important it is to restore these buildings or preserve these buildings in the first place. I mean, we're not the only ones, there were many other people who were and, uh, and, doing that. And the, the amazing thing is that, uh, you know, people often spend way more than that on right. purchasing a work of art that you hang on the wall, yeah. Yeah. and this is a, a work of art that you can experience every day and, and be, you know, immersed in. And, uh, uh, and somehow that still hadn't caught on, but but I think it, it has now, and, right. and people realize mm -hmm. that this is you know not just a, a place to live, but you're investing in in the preservation of an uh, important body of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you know for me it was also because I had done so much work around John Lautner doing this first book, looking after the archive. Uh, I did that until 2007 when it was. Um, Acquired by the Getty, it's now at, at, at the Getty, and uh, you know, uh, Lautner was an architect who, in my opinion, did not receive the recognition he deserved during his lifetime, and and uh, though I really think of him as somewhat of a genius, I mean, really, really interesting uh, architect who combined sort of like the reading of nature and understanding of nature with like the most modern technologies and and and, and, and you know uh, uh, it's difficult to, for example to talk about his work without talking about 20th century structural engineering and so the restoration of that house in a way was also for me a way to sort of help uh, restore in a way his sort of reputation but but um, uh, I think I think it was uh, a great sort of uh, uh, a lot you know a great deal of luck that uh, uh, that like Benedict uh, 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 bought the house yeah. and that and that he understood sort of uh, instinctively what the house needed, what the house mm -hmm. meant, what the house was, what the house could be, 
and uh, uh, I don't think I can't think of anyone sort of better suited as the owner of, of, of that house than him, honestly. He does. You know, he, st he still owns it, and and and. So when we uh, 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 met him, he was uh, still married to his second wife, and we worked with them on uh, on the house, and and uh, uh, the house, you know, it became their sort of their house in Los Angeles, and 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 he sort of gradually moved his American headquarters from New York to Los Angeles, and uh, and now in the meantime he's bought several other properties around uh, the. Uh, the chemisphere and and uh, uh, he's really moved his operations uh, here. Um, yeah, the house and, and, and city, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, working on each of these projects, you can't help but uh, sort of dive into the thinking of these other architects and, and how they develop their, their practice and how they de develop their work. And, uh, and th though there's no conscious, conscious effort to, or conscious influence, uh, of these architects, and, and, and it's, it's quite a, a broad range of uh, points of view and, and uh, ways of thinking. And, uh, but there is, uh, in the process, we, we do absorb some, uh, some ideas and, and open up our thinking to, to these influences. So, um, and, and that's quite often, you know, when we finish working on a certain uh, important uh, LA icon and the next project that we finish, people automatically make these associations. Well, oh, this must be influenced by Laudner or by Neutra. But uh, I would say it's, it's not, at least not consciously. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't help not being influenced by them. But, you know, I, I, I would say that you know, uh, it's it's naive to think that our culture today is not shaped and influenced by what has happened before us, and and I think that you know, uh, uh, studying uh, uh, even very recent history is 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 incredibly enriching. And so, what what has happened in our case is really that um, uh, you know, other than the Lautner project where we first did a lot of research into the work and then did the restoration. I think in all of the other projects it's been sort of the other way around where we start working on a project and that leads to kind of an intense study of, of you know, the entire maybe cultural context or sort of the work of, of these people. So when we start working on the Eames house, for example, uh, we didn't know more about the Eameses than, you know, most other architects, but that actually led to really uh, being able to uh, intensely study their work, their life, their philosophy and, 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 and their entire sort of, uh, uh, you know, um, thinking. And, and, and we are currently, for example, we're working on, um, uh, we're restoring the house that Paul Williams built for himself, who was a very prominent African-American uh, architect, very successful. Uh, and, and but not some we knew very much about, and so now we've, we've been sort of uh, studying uh, the the, uh, the the work and, and 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 the life of this man, and you know what made him this important sort of uh, this iconic figure, and 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 even some you know uh, uh, very sort of dark sides of that. Yeah. One reason that he was so successful, and so prolific, was he basically charged less than other. Uh, uh, respected ar uh, architects. A lot of people went to Paul Williams because they could get a good house for less money. Uh, we're also we're working on the uh, reconstruction of a house that um, uh, burnt down with the only known set of drawings um, uh, by Gregory Ain. And Gregory Ain is another really important uh, post-war figure who was 
uh, very interested in, in looking at the um, uh, issues around providing housing for the larger population, mass housing. He did really interesting projects like the Marvis or the Avenel um, um, uh, uh, tracks. And uh, his career was actually cut short because he was a member of the Communist Party and the FBI basically so at one point just shut him down. And uh, again, this was the case where we didn't know that much about him, but sort of our uh, sort of involvement in this particular project and sort of researching not just the building, but researching uh, Ains' life uh, uh, is, is just, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of something that we just take, uh, uh, we just make this part of our our practice and our and our uh, uh, research and and in in Ains' case, I'm not even sure that he he was a member of the Communist Party, but his activity in providing affordable housing, mm. in finding ways for people to uh, finance their houses through collectives rather than banks, all of this was seen as as uh, as communist or as you know foreign influences and. And so he had an FBI record for many years where, where people were tracking his every move. And of course they didn't find anything on him. Um, but there, there's a lot of very interesting histories like that through LA, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, or, or throughout the country. But, uh, and uh, so these are kind of things that we also uncover while doing right. research on these projects. And, and for example, in, in uh, Paul Williams' case, you know, the, Though he was this very uh, uh, prominent and influential architect, uh, when he built his house, there were still uh, laws that restricted where pe certain people of certain color could live, and so, um, and and that's that's always surprising to think that you know in the 1950s or 60s that uh, these these were still concerns uh, for people. Or you know the project that Ravi mentioned earlier, this uh, Church of the Epiphany. So on one hand, it is the oldest existing Episcopal church in Los Angeles, and two buildings built by very prominent uh, architects at the time. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know our uh, involvement when we were approached, uh, because we don't really sort of deal with buildings of the late 19th, early 20th century, uh, but. We were just completely drawn to the cultural history of this place, and this, the, you know, the, and 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 the events that happened there, and sort of the, the you know the rise of the Chicano movement that came from there, and so uh, this again is a building was sort of like the uh, uh, the start for us to do. Uh, I mean, for years for the research and to right. the activity and and the movement and and. What this meant for the the larger arc of civil rights in America, mm -hmm. and uh, and along with it, uh, you know, discovering the art that was produced in the region. So uh, there were artists at the church, and uh, the art of protest, you know, uh, that developed um, places like self help graphics, um, and all out of like, reclaiming a cultural identity. And, and, and there was a, another really interesting project that sort of came out of that. Um, uh, uh, Robbie co-curated with um, uh, three other people uh, an exhibition on uh, the uh, art of protest, and it was contemporary uh, uh, artists sort of, you know, uh, uh, commenting on the current uh, political uh, situation and uh, along with some uh, historic art from from the 1960s and so different but similar issues you know have to do with being the other and uh, mm -hmm. and relating that to the current issues of uh, immigration and, and rights of of people of color so. mm -hmm. We, we, we've taught on and off. I mean, it's not been sort of a, 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 you know, a continuous sort of academic career, but we've both taught at uh, some local schools at uh, Cal Poly, and I taught for many years at USC. Um, and uh, then we, were, we taught at um, um, University of Oregon, uh, and then uh, uh, most recently was at, uh, at the APF in Lausanne, Switzerland, and, and uh, 
Uh, so I, I studied architecture at the ETH in Zurich, and the APF is just the equivalent in the French part of Switzerland. But they have a really interesting program that deals with uh, sort of design within the context of 20th century architecture. And, and uh, uh, there, um, uh, there is sort of a great focus maybe on European architecture. The person who runs the program, uh, Franz Graf, is a Corbusier specialist and is on the board of the Corbusier Foundation. And so they invited us actually uh, with a specific request to do something about uh, Los Angeles and to sort of introduce uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, 20th century architecture to their students, do projects around that. And uh, it was uh, really incredibly interesting. I mean, we had uh, great students, very, very good teaching assistants. And, and uh, uh, it was, again, in a way, uh, 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 an opportunity for, for us to, to look at some of the architecture that we are surrounded uh, by uh, with sort of different eyes. And, and so the, um, uh, the first semester there was, uh, we proposed um, a visitor center for the Eames house and that's what the students did. But then in the second semester we kind of expanded the idea and we um, uh, wanted the students to think about uh, uh, what we called frugal architecture, sort of architecture done with maybe more modest economic means. Uh, which is an idea that exists, you know, in in uh, current Japanese architecture, for example. Uh, it's certainly something that exists in in our own work and and sort of you know building with uh, maybe uh, uh, more modest means. Uh, but in in in, uh, in Lausanne, uh, uh, it started out uh, looking at the work of Schindler, all the way to early Frank Gehry. Uh, and looking at uh, 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 more contemporary work and uh, uh, students did a project uh, uh, for a site next to a Schindler apartment building and Schindler had actually done a, a project that, that was never uh, built and so it was, you know, we allowed the students to interpret this idea in whatever shape uh, or in whatever way they, they wanted to and some did um, focus more on um, Sort of the social aspects of how to use space and the idea of communal space. I mean, I would say the more important uh, thing is a balance between the practice and and either teaching or. Uh, the uh, involvement in, uh, you know, working around architecture is not necessarily building. Uh, I, I was, for many years, I was in, uh, involved with the uh, Los Angeles Forum for Architecture and Urban Design, a very important organization that exists in Los Angeles and, and uh, you know, organizes um, uh, anything from lectures to publications to uh, uh, exhibitions, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can't exist without theory. But I, w I don't think that uh, 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 theory is sort of uh, the foundation for our own work. I mean, we, we there's so ma many other things that we are interested in and that we pick up, and 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 uh, uh, you know, at the end. As, as practicing architects and, and architects who want to sort of do uh, uh, work and build things and look, look, look at things. I mean, that is almost more interesting than, than the uh, strictly sort of... Um, um, Theoretical approach. Uh, 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 right, right. But, and, but I, think, I, I think theory to the extent that conceptual clarity is very important to us and, mm -hmm. and construction methodology and so that that informs our work very much, and uh, and in, in terms of conceptual clarity, it's it's almost like how artists approach work, and um, and and I think having an idea and and being able to to read that in the end is very important mm -hmm. in our work. Right, right. And I should maybe also say that you know both of us uh, in in our sort of educational background, 
we came from very technical schools. I mean, at the ETH, uh, you know, construction is a central part of your education from the beginning on. And 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 at the same uh, uh, for 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 Ravi. So we 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 didn't come from schools where architectural theory was uh, the sort of the the, the bedrock of the of the, of the uh, education. I think that has probably also sort of shaped our own thinking and our own uh, uh, approach. I mean, again, I think you know architecture is such a vast uh, field and it requires the different sort of interests and different uh, explorations uh, and uh, by, by different people and uh, one sort of shapes the other or informs the other. It's just that I think we are maybe less on the kind of the theory end than uh, some of our colleagues. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, 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 the son who was a really interesting architect and completely overshadowed by his father. Right. Uh, uh, yes, so there's, uh, there, every now and then, well not every now and then, there's always something. Uh, uh, but it's not that frequent, you know, it's once or twice a year a, mm -hmm. a really important work comes on the market and uh, sometimes uh, they also been recently restored or, or remodeled and uh, and and uh, other times uh, part part of buying the project is is also an investment into restoring the, the work so so that's all, all, often the determining factor in who who would buy a house like that mm -hmm. um, and because you know, there's this sort of really interesting shift that happened. That I, I always think of, you know, people who commissioned these houses at the beginning, uh, who, you know, some of these maybe not the Navarra house, but others were actually done on very small budgets. And 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 uh, you know, I, I always think of these people as re the real patrons who commissioned these these works of of, of art and and allowed something like that to be produced. And but now it has shifted to sort of uh, really to collectors who who uh, uh, you know collect these buildings as works of art and are are just as important uh, you know in 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 the preservation of this as the patron was in the commissioning of of, of this. Uh, it's it's sometimes unfortunate that these buildings have now become so unaffordable that uh, you know to most people. That the kind of people that were commissioning these projects can no longer afford them, and 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 so there's you know in the case of Lautner there's very few uh, uh, buildings that are still owned by the families that commissioned them, uh, or by people in sort of similar social uh, 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 circumstances, and 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 these houses have now become these sort of um, uh, you know very uh, expensive, very sought after uh, uh, collector items. Collector items, yeah. yeah. And well, um, so uh, among the earliest works in in the art world uh, came about uh, with the collaboration that we did with uh, the, the artist Sharon Lockhart, an LA artist and uh, she uh, wanted some help with uh, a major retrospective that she was doing in Chicago and uh, and that started a, a long relationship with her and, and so for the past 15 years or so we've uh, collaborated on, on numerous exhibition design projects with her um, and, and from that also grew uh, or, or our reputation uh, was was known to other museum curators and so forth, and so we've been invited over time to uh, do exhibition designs, not on uh, single artists, but also on thematic uh, exhibitions and uh, and sort of encyclopedic exhibitions. And and that then also sort of further led to uh, designing 
um, spaces for exhibitions or, or sp spaces for art uh, galleries and things like that. But but you know, to us that was also always that that's like the other arm. In it, you know, uh, 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 in addition to architectural history, there's this uh, uh, interest in contemporary art and and you know, probably mentioned earlier, sort of the kind of the maybe the thinking of an artist and the idea of how how to you know conceptualize uh, uh, your 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 uh, uh, work is something that becomes really um, uh, important uh, and 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 something that uh, as an architect you also have to uh, uh, think about and and uh, there's just kind of a lot of affinity with uh, many artists. Uh, a lot of people have become our friends, and and uh, being uh, able to sort of talk about your work with them or talk about their work, uh, and and uh, it it just sort of starts to shape the way you 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 look at your own uh, 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 work. And again, I mean, we're not the only people who who do that. I mean, there's a number of. Uh, uh, architects uh, internationally who have uh, whose work has really sort of benefited from this dialogue with uh, uh, art and and uh, uh, it's it's just uh, something that we find extremely enriching and it is so much part of the Los Angeles kind of cultural topography you know this uh, 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 really amazing contemporary art scene that uh, 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 you know, it's just sort of like the the world that surrounds us, and 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 it has become just sort of a natural extension, in a way, of of, of our own uh, uh, work. And so, you know, as a result, I mean, we're we're, we're constantly we're working on um, uh, um, exhibition projects or or uh, collaborations with artists. Uh, we are currently working on a really interesting exhibition for the Kemper Museum in St. Louis. Uh, it's on uh, this uh, what is called Matt edition. Daniel Sperry, the important Swiss uh, artist, who uh, uh, started looking at the idea of having other artists sort of produce um, um, works that he would then uh, make uh, uh, editions of. Uh, at the beginning, he would do that himself, and and so there's this really sort of interesting kind of body of, of, of work that exists and uh, again for us sort of doing this particular project is sort of like an investigation into an, uh, an aspect of art history that we were not that familiar with and again it's sort of like you know doing a lot of research into that and being uh, uh, you know just learning about something kind of exciting and new and, and like frugal architecture, you know, this uh, uh, Sperry's work or, or these mad editions were about disseminating affordable art, you know, and um, it's a very interesting project. So curation sort of creeps into our practice. Um, we would never consider ourselves as curators or other, other than these specific, specific instances where, for example, the curation of the, the show on the art of protest. But in, in most cases, when we're collaborating with either an artist or a museum, um, the, the curation happens uh, as a secondary aspect where, where we may uh, notice certain things about the checklist and and find different ways of organizing the work or or that uh, uh, in in spatial terms that uh, certain work uh, we, we recognize as fitting better in a, in in one section uh, as compared to another right, right, right. so right I mean it's it, it, it's essentially a dialogue and and and, and I think that um, I would say that uh, curators that we've worked with and who have told us how uh, they they benefited from this sort of discussion with us and and and, and we certainly we start I think always with the uh, curatorial narrative but uh, uh, it's not really possible to design an exhibition without commenting on on that curatorial narrative and sometimes. 
uh, you know, it, it, the, the design starts to maybe uh, 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 give feedback to this, uh, uh, to the uh, curatorial uh, narrative. Uh, I mean, we, we have been involved with uh, some exhibitions um, uh, more uh, where there was more of, of, the, uh, uh, of curation. Uh, I did a, a, a big exhibition on John Lautner, which I co-curated with uh, Nicholas Olsberg, a, a cultural historian. Uh, and and uh, then there's been several projects uh, with uh, with uh, Sharon uh, where uh, we were very much involved in looking at uh, maybe uh, objects from a collection where she was showing her work that would resonate with her own work and and uh, uh, it's uh, it really it, it's it's more of a sort of dialogue I would say than 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 a, than a than a monologue than a, than, than a formal role in right. the curation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, if you start with, um, uh, you know, architectural history, uh, there are really interesting buildings uh, that cover the last sort of like 120 years that in a way sort of tell the architectural history of the 20th century, but also kind of the, uh, the history of Los Angeles as a, as a city. and, and, and you know, starting with uh, some of these really beautiful arts and crafts uh, or arts and crafts like buildings, uh, the Green and Green, you know, the Gamble House, to these uh, 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 experiments that Frank Lloyd Wright did. I think, you know, the work that he did in Los Angeles, I feel, is some of the most interesting work that Wright uh, that did, coming at a very difficult period in his own uh, life. Uh, and then, you know, through Wright, people like Rudolf Schindler come to Los Angeles. Schindler's own house, I think, is almost, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a radical building, and still today, uh, uh, the way it is built, but really the way it was thought out and as a space and a, a, a place for, you know, for adults to, 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 to live. It's a very, very uh, beautiful house, and it plays a, a central role in, in, in today's um, um, cultural life in Los Angeles. It's a center for contemporary art and architecture. It's now a satellite of the MAC in Vienna, Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna. Uh, uh, for many years it was uh, run by uh, Kimberly Meyer. It's now run by uh, Priscilla Fraser. Uh, both of them have made really important uh, contributions to kind of the cultural life in, in, in Los Angeles. So that is most definitely a, a, a place to visit. Uh, and then if you start to look at sort of the developments pre-war and after the war when the, you know, the, the, it was recognized that there was a housing shortage, all of these ideas of having um, uh, housing that could be inexpensively produced or repeated uh, the whole case study program, and then of course you know, there's the Eames House that is one of the, I mean it's one of the most important houses of the 20th century, but it's uh, probably one of the best known houses in Los Angeles and best known houses of the case study program. Uh, 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 that is definitely an important place to, to, to visit and to experience. There's other case study houses that can be seen. And then if you move into sort of post-case study architecture, certainly the work of John Lautner, early Frank Gehry, works by Ray Cappy, an, uh, uh, an architect not known well enough, even though he has played a, a central role in the uh, uh, architectural history of Los Angeles. He's the founder of SciArc. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, you know, people know him for that, but his own work uh, with these really interesting influences of uh, Asian architecture is just as, as, as uh, important and, and interesting. So there's this kind of like, you know, incredible list, and I know so I'm going to so that, that ton of <laughs> And that's strictly through the, the lens and the visors of an, an architect yes. interested in 20th century yes, architecture. Yes. But, uh, but, I, but I think also to look uh, further and earlier in history, you know, uh, 
looking at Native American architecture and and how that influenced uh, co uh, Spanish colonial architecture, the architecture of the missions, the adobes, the ranchos, uh, then then all the different cultural influences. You know, uh, looking at these neighborhoods of uh, of Olvera Street and East LA and and uh, Little Tokyo, Koreatown, South Central LA, and because all of these brought in various cultural influences, and uh, you know w one aspect uh, um, that uh, I'm looking at now uh, toward an exhibition is the influence of Japan on modernism in America and and particularly Southern California and post and beam architecture. You know, there's there's a direct thread. And it, it had to do with what people were exposed to and uh, what modernist architects were exposed to uh, coming from Japan. And uh, so, so I think that there's a very rich uh, cultural uh, history in LA and, and that's, uh, that's something that everyone who visits here should not miss. And, and along with it comes uh, incredible food and, and music and, dance uh, so um, so uh, we always kind of point people to going and visiting these different neighborhoods when they're they're coming from out of town mm -hmm. so, right, right. And, and 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 then the whole uh, art uh, uh, community and again so you know just really interesting schools with very uh, uh, you know with groups of artists that exist around uh, um, uh, these schools, but um, uh, are really uh, uh, vibrant and I, I feel very important contemporary art uh, uh, scene, uh, uh, exciting galleries, uh, more and more uh, international galleries that come to Los Angeles and 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 uh, uh, you know uh, establish themselves. Here, so so just really, there's there's uh, multiple different uh, uh, tours that one or, or ways that one can sort of uh, uh, discover the city and read and, the city, and read the city, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. or or you know, uh, really just sort of uh, looking at how the city was was developed and and what were sort of social or legal sort of parameters that sort of uh, 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 influence the planning in, and, and right. how, how the city grew. Right, right. I mean, you know, LACMA is the most important encyclopedic museum in the Western United States. Yeah. I mean that that's that's just a fact, and and LACMA, uh, you know, it has an extraordinary collection. It really does. It has, uh, you know, shady buildings, which is, <laughs> wi wi you know, which and 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 which, which for the, the past twenty years they've been trying to address. You know, right. first was this major project by Rem Koolhaas, which died uh, because people are saying, oh, it's expensive, it's taxpayer money, blah blah blah. And uh, which most of it is not for those kind of projects. So it's private donors, and so there's this current project by Peter Zumtor that's being proposed, and the same kind of criticisms are coming up, along with stupid things like, oh, you know, they they look at the the conceptual design presentation, like where are they going to put loading docks and things like that. You know, the, those are things that you work out in in the process. Not it's not the big idea that you present at the beginning. But uh, so, so there, there, there are some excellent museums, um, and LACMA, for example, doesn't have the visibility that, say, the Met has, even though it has an equally impressive collection. Half of it or more is in storage somewhere. So, so that's. I mean, I wouldn't say it has an equally. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I mean has the, a, the, the Met is 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 on a different sort of level, but 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 it has a very very uh, important collection. And and so and uh, Mocha had was a, an important center for contemporary art at one time, started by artists, and um, and but then at some point the administration kind of imploded, and and it's pretty much 
disappeared from the consciousness of the art world right now, but then it's, it's trying to make a comeback. And then there are these small museums like the Hammer Museum that is a very good museum, and uh, the Norton Simon. Uh, so, so there are there are these uh, these and different the, and the Getty, and, yeah. And so there are these different uh, museums, but they don't have the visibility, n nor really the support from from big money that New York does, and. Um, and the thing is that in LA, people with real money are in the film industry. And if you look at where they live and how they live, their their art is not in their consciousness. <laughs> and uh, and whereas in New York, you know, uh, it's mostly people in the business sector and banking and such. And, and so for them, it's. I'm not sure that it's any more in their consciousness, but to them, the prestige of being seen surrounded by certain kinds of work, and, you know, art and environment is important to them. Whereas in Hollywood, you know, having a fake Italian villa with reproduction art is good enough for them, and they'll they'll spend their money elsewhere. But, but, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the Getty is really, I mean, nationally important uh, as, yeah. as an institution. And, uh, you know, they, because it's not just the museum, it's a, it's a foundation, it's a conservation institute, it's a research institute that, that very actively collects, uh, you know, important uh, archives. And, and, then, and then all the projects, uh, like satellite projects that they, mm -hmm. Uh, kind of invisibly support right, in the region, right, right. So. and and so so you know there, there it, it it has it has actually a really interesting constellation of of mm -hmm. of of, uh, of of museums and the you know museums like the Norton Simon. I mean, they start out as private collections. In this case, actually, a private collection not of Norton Simon, but of Kalkashire, the you know very important uh, uh, art. Dealer. She was the one who sort of promoted the uh, whole Blaue Reiter mm -hmm. okay. uh, group. Came to Los Angeles. Was a very very uh, uh, influential art dealer, and, and her collection sort of, you know, is a very important part of the Norton Simon. As as is some of the work that he himself collected, and now you know people like Broad or Marciano who are becoming, uh, uh, you know, making their collections. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, into public institutions, so there is, that is uh, that is happening now. That is starting to, to happen. Yeah, but and, um, and uh, we are a little bit behind New York just in terms of time. So that, that's mm -hmm. thing. But there's there's really there's very very good museums. Yeah, and, and, you know, and yeah. Mocha, you know, really, I mean, it, to think of the idea of a museum being really sort of started by artists. I mean that's that, that's 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 really and, and that's that quite, kind quite of unique first generation of modernist artists in LA people yeah. like Ed Boucher and John yeah. Baldessari yeah. and and the early minimalist yeah. um, Mocha um, at um, you've probably heard of the Count Panza collection mm -hmm. and so uh, Count Panza collected a lot of these artists who were among the first group at Mocha and then in the 1980s he gifted the huge um, body of work that he had amassed and gave it back to Mocha, mm -hmm. and so, so I like that there there are uh, these important collections, but um, they struggle financially because there there isn't um, there isn't uh, the understanding you know, public support or you know from government support for the arts and so they have to rely a lot on, on fundraising and donations and that's what really makes it different from European uh, institutions for example they, they don't have to go around